So it has been over six months since the Wahoo Kicker 2020 or V5 or the whatever the heck you want to call it was released. All the way back on August 11th, roughly seven pandemics ago at this point. And now here we are the last couple of days of December and we finally got a firmware update for it. If you remember to my full review of it, my in-depth review, I had one core issue with it. It wasn't accurate. In fact, it was less accurate than past kickers. And in one particular area, going up any sort of climb. Now, it wasn't really climbs per se that was the problem, but it was what's called low flywheel speeds. Or anytime that thingy on the back of the kicker there was moving slowly, it would be inaccurate, primarily if you surge. So if you're going up a climb on Zwift and you see some person ahead of you, you go to pass them, boom, inaccurate. And in some cases, like 100 watts inaccurate, way, way off. Now, granted, it was overshooting, so it technically benefited you, but we're here for accuracy even when it even when it doesn't really help us any. So in this case, I wanted to see if this fixed the issue. Uh, and that's something that I basically want to test side by side or pre and post, I guess you could say, uh, the update. So what I did is I loaded up Zwift first and I put it on the flats just to kind of demonstrate that the issue wasn't there. Uh, and I did a couple of different surges in four different sets. So on this first test on the flats, you'll see it's accurate throughout the entire thing. This is compared against a Quarka D0 as well as an SRMX uh, pedal based power meter at the same time. We don't have to belabor this first one. It's accurate. It always was accurate. That's fine. Again, this is pre-update. Uh, so then I went ahead and I moved over to Alp to Zwift. And so the reason I did that wasn't because I wanted like a super steep climb. I just wanted a never-ending climb where I could do this test over and over and over again to show you different configurations and stuff like that. So steeper doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's just low flywheel speed that matters here. Uh, and so you see it in the first part of the test with the big ring in the front and the top of the cassette. That's pretty accurate because it's a high flywheel speed. Then you see the next one where big ring in the front and the bottom of the cassette. And that's actually less accurate because it's now a lower flywheel speed because I was struggling. Like that's the hardest possible gearing going up 10 to 12% grade. It's very, very difficult. So I was going very, very slowly. Uh, and then you see I go to the small ring in the front and then the bottom of the cassette. And that's mostly pretty accurate there because again, the flywheel speed went back up again. But then the last one is when it all craps the bed. In that case, I've got the small chain ring in the front as well as the top of the cassette in the back. So I'm going like the slowest possible gearing here. And you can see that each of these surges, I spike a ton, upwards of 100 watts uh, where the kicker overestimates. And then as it goes over the edge of that particular surge, it's off the entire time. Uh, so this is the, the core scenario that Wahoo was trying to solve with this firmware update. So with that proven on the pre-firmware update, I went ahead and I updated my kicker. I used the Wahoo app, super simple, takes a couple minutes, you're done. Uh, then I unplugged the kicker, plugged it back in, reconnected to Zwift. I left the Zwift running the entire time, uh, so no changes there. And then did the test again. Uh, and what you see here is that first First, big ring front, top of the set, you know, high flywheel scenario, no problems, just like before. Then you see me try to shift uh, while 12% grade going up uh, all the way down to the hardest gear, virtually impossible. My ETAP bike was like, no, no, you don't, you can't do that right here. Nice, nice try. So I gave up on that since it didn't really matter too much here. And instead went to the small uh, ring in the front and the bottom of the cassette, again, accurate. But then the most important one here is the small ring in the front and the top of the cassette in the back. In other words, this lowest, slowest flywheel speed. And you can see it's spot on. I held this test for extra long. It did a bunch of surges and low speed and high speed uh, surges, if you will, within that. So kind of accelerating faster, accelerating slower didn't really matter. It was all the same. It was accurate across the board. So the long and the short of it is it's fixed. That's like, that's the, the short version of this video at this point, which is a good reason to hit that like button, by the way, since you got here, you're with me on this journey, hit that like button. Uh, it really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Uh, now the bigger question is, should you buy a Kicker 2020? Finally, at this point, I don't have any reason not to. Like there's no caveat here on buying it. Would you want to upgrade from a Kicker 18 to Kicker 2020? Probably not. Um, you know, accuracy wise, it's a wash. There's no real differences there for the most part. There is that like calibration, auto calibration thing on the Kicker 2020, but you know, that's not like a reason per se to upgrade because the underlying accuracy was fine. There is the action or the access action feat on the Kicker 2020. As I showed in my review, not really a reason either. It's got almost negligible differences there. Um, and then there's that port in the back, uh, which is the one that allows wired connectivity if you've got like connectivity dropouts and stuff like that. But Wahoo actually hasn't made that enabled yet because it's gonna require a separate dongle that you have to buy to plug into it. Uh, and that hasn't been announced or anything there yet either. And there's no apps to support it either. So 
I would say there's no reason today to upgrade from a Kicker 18 to a Kicker 20 um, or Kicker V5. There is probably good reasons to upgrade from like an original Kicker or an older Kicker, whatever the case is, if you want like a quieter uh, trainer or all that kind of stuff. Now, the flip side of that is that if you had another trainer out there and you wanted to jump into the Wahoo ecosystem, then the Kicker V5 is, in my opinion, now like a totally viable option without any weird caveats and all that kind of stuff. So it just works like it should now, which is which is a nice touch. Anyways, there you go. Again, if you found this video interesting, hit like or go ahead and hit subscribe for plenty more technology goodness, sports technology goodness. Uh, and with that, I'll probably see you next year. Have a good one.